AI image generation is getting more and more powerful and generating better and better images. But if you're just getting started using these AI images in print on demand, then you probably already know that getting the images is only half the battle. You need to know how to process them. So in this beginner's guide to AI image processing for print on demand, I'm going to go over best practices and give you some methods that I personally use to integrate these AI images into my portfolio. So let's start with what our end goal is when we are processing these AI images. We ultimately want to end up with an image that has a transparent background is not blurry and has no issues with partial transparency. So ultimately we are taking our image from something that looks like this to something that looks like this. But before we get started, we need to talk about upscaling or vectorizing our AI images. If we go with the standard output from the AI image generators, we're going to have a lot of issues with the image quality not being good enough for the sizes required for print on demand. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, which is my tool of choice for processing these AI images. There are tons of different options, but this is the tool we're going to roll with today. So here is what the non-upscaled standard version looks like. And let's go ahead and punch in maybe around this tail. You could see along the edge here that it's quite blurry and we do not have a clearly defined line. Now, this is what happens when we upscale the image. And there we go. We have a much clearer line. It's not perfect, but it's pretty decent and we do not have blurriness within the image. So when we're talking about AI images coming from these AI image generators, we usually end up with this dark background or a light background behind whatever it is that we asked for as an output. With the only exception as of the time of recording this video being the ChatGPT 4.0 image generator. So the first method we're gonna go through is the color masking method. So to do that, we click the design, we click select and we click color range. You can click or unclick invert. And I would click invert, click the background, and then we slide this around to where we think we'll remove the background without removing the actual image that we're trying to keep. So if we did this, this fuzziness at 15, we're going to keep all kinds of background elements in there. So let's slide it over here and you'll have to start using judgment and experimenting to see what kind of fuzziness you need to use for each of the images that you're processing. So let's start by using kind of a low fuzziness and see what happens. And then we go ahead and we click this down here, it's layer mask, and then let's punch in and see if we removed everything we need to remove. So we're missing a decent part of the color range. We have these little ugly splotches that may show up in the design, it may not, but we don't wanna take any chances because that's the kind of thing that a customer might return for. And if you're on Etsy or any of those marketplaces, it will cost you a bunch of money. So let's go ahead and avoid that. And we've got this rectangle on the outside, which happens pretty much every time you use this masking method, but it's still my preferred method of processing these designs. So what I would do, if, if this worked out perfectly in the center, I would go ahead, click that, click the brush, make sure that we are using this black here, and then we can run along the bottom and the side to make sure that we remove that semi-transparent rectangle. And we'll do it at the top here too. If you're processing an image and you want to make sure that it has certain colors coming back through, you can just paint with the white color. And that just affects the mask. We didn't lose any of the information. It's just covered by a mask. But we still have that transparency issue that we can't let sit there. So let's go ahead and resolve that issue. Now, the way we resolve it when we're doing color masking is we could, we could start right over here, is we do the same thing as before. We click the image, we click select, color range, and then we just slide the fuzziness over. 
And if we punch in, we're going to see that almost all of this partial transparency issue is gone. But let's go ahead and make sure that we get all of it. Same steps, and let's go way over here to about 160. And we do the same step where we do the layer mask. And here we go, it's pretty much gone. But then we end up with this issue where we've got these partially transparent elements. So this design would work totally fine if we remove those elements that got partially masked out. And I don't like the comma or the period, so we can go ahead and remove those as well. So in a perfect world, if we had this really irritating bright green, like a green screen, it would be extremely easy to isolate and remove that color. If we ask for a neon green background, it ends up affecting the image, so we can't really do that. But ultimately, a lot of what makes it easier to effectively remove the backgrounds is making sure that we structure our prompts the correct way in the first place. So if we had this on a white background, or if we had this on a gray background of some kind, then it would be really easy to remove the background while not destroying any piece of the image. But let's go ahead and do the color deletion method so you could see what it looks like. So in order to do this color deletion method, we need to have a rasterized layer, which means it's been turned into pixels. It's not a smart object or a vector. So we have rasterized it. All we did was right click and go to rasterize layer. And now that's our design as a raster image. So it would work very similar to before. We go select color range and we click and we need to go off of invert. We click OK, and then we do delete. And as you can see, we have removed the background. And as a bonus, we don't have that thin line on the perimeter. So this color deletion method is destructive, but this is a legitimate option for simpler backgrounds to remove. So we've already gone through color range masking, color range deletion. So let's go through another closely related option where we're just selecting a color range and we're copy pasting. So here we are with the same image. We can do the same thing, select color range, and we can click the text here if we want to select the text. And again, we can slide around the fuzziness. If we only want to pull the text, we would choose something like 54. And if we wanted to pull a bigger range, we would slide the fuzziness. So let's just get the text here. And we can go copy, control C, control V, and we have pasted the text layer only. This works really well when we have designs that are all in the same color. So the mono color, vintage, retro animals do really well with this type of method. Uh, as well as anything that uses silhouettes. So we have the text now, let's pull the dragon. So let's click here. And then obviously we're gonna need to slide this to make sure that we are getting the entire image. And then we can copy, paste, and there we have the dragon. As you can see that there is partial transparency because it's not a single color, it's a range of colors. If we look at the original, we have different colors of gold here. One way around that is to just take this layer and duplicate it a bunch of times. As you can see, every time we add a layer, we remove transparency. And then once you are satisfied, you can select all of these, right click and click convert to smart object to turn it into a single layer. Now you could even name the layer for organization. And now we have our fully opaque dragon without partial transparency issues. And then when we add back this layer, and now we have the full design. All of those three methods rely upon using color ranges in different ways to alter the image. I personally prefer the color masking method because it's not destructive. Then after that, I tend to use the color range selection. And then when I have my very most simple designs that I know are going to work perfectly with color range deletion, I do that because it's the fastest. But I'll also show you what it looks like when we use an AI tool to do 
something similar. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop again. We have selected our image. We need to make sure it's a raster image, which it already is. It's not a smart object or a vector file. So we have to go to the Properties tab, which is over here. And if, and if you don't have it here, you can go to Window Properties, and then it will bring up a window for you to use. So we can scroll down and we see this Remove Background and Select Subject option. They do essentially the same thing. This is using Photoshop's AI algorithm, so to speak, to select the subject or remove the background. And yeah, you, you could see that it is not doing a great job with selecting the subject. It's not going to remove the background for us. So let's go ahead and hit Control D. That deselects it. Let's see if when we click this and we go to remove background, if it's the same kind of deal. So we clicked remove background and yes, it does not do a good job of that. So that was an attempt using Photoshop's AI algorithm and obviously it didn't work well enough for our purposes. So let's go over to Pixian, which is one of the best background removal services that I've seen and it's relatively affordable. So let's slide on over to there with the same image. This is definitely one of the best AI background removal options we have available to us. In fact, you could just copy from here and then take it and paste it directly into Photoshop. And as you could see, it does work. But if you look closer, it still doesn't do a perfect job of removing all of that color range. So it does have its limitations. That being said, it does work really well with certain types of images, especially if the images are on a white background. Let's go ahead and go through some of the most common problems in rapid fire succession. In order to see this a little bit better, we're gonna put this green background here and we're going to go through examples of common problems that happen when we're relying on different methods. So this image was essentially the AI not knowing how to punch out all of the white color. So this is a partial mask out. Now we can go ahead and we can apply any of the techniques that we used earlier in the video to deal with punching out the white the rest of the way. So let's go ahead and mask it out real quick and boom. And that got rid of almost all of it. It's very nearly good enough for our purposes. However, we have these white speckles everywhere. We have the white speckles in the shirt so let's go ahead and make it so that those are not a problem. And we can do that by simply doing a color overlay. And we can color overlay and we can change it to black because almost all of the design was black. And then all of a sudden we've got a much cleaner looking image. And here we have the same type of of issue. We have the white that is still stubbornly sticking into the design. And this is very common when you are using those AI tools like Pixian that we miss some of this white. So we go, we right click it, go to blending options, and then we do a color overlay and we now have a much cleaner output. Okay, so we did all of our demonstrations on this image, so I'm not gonna beat it to death, but I did want to show you an example of what it looks like when we have a very well optimized image that's much easier to process. So here we are with a very simple one color background. So when we select this, we go to select color range and then we invert and we click this, it becomes very easy to isolate that exact color. So that worked perfectly from the get-go. Now, the only thing that you need to keep in mind is that you still need to go through, remove this thin line on the perimeter. So we make sure our brush is set on black. We've clicked the layer mask, and then we can go ahead and remove this line. And we can remove this line up here. And that design is ready. We can just hit Control T to transform, and then we can move it and we can center it. And we press Enter and that is ready to export 
without a background. So as you can see, making sure that we're prompting the correct way on the front end makes it so we have much cleaner designs on the back end. So we can't ignore that part of the puzzle. It's probably the most important part of the puzzle. So let's go back into Photoshop and see some more common problems. Another thing that we can do to improve our designs that we are processing from AI images is removing the smaller, rougher design elements because they don't add anything to the design necessarily. And because they could take away from the perceived quality of the design, especially if for some reason these small elements are very small and they print poorly. So you could end up with returns for poor print quality. So you can choose to leave some of the biggest ones um, or you could do what I tend to do and just remove all of them because it makes it much less likely that you end up with issues with print quality. And that took all of just a few seconds. Okay, so here's another one with a somewhat simple background. It's got stars in the back. So let's go ahead and rasterize it. And we can start by using the eraser tool and removing as much as we can that we see these stars that we're not really wanting to keep. And then we can go ahead and do select color range, click that, we'll take away the inversion, and let's delete with extreme prejudice here. And here we are. Okay, so here we are with an example of a difficult to remove background. Personally, if I have an output like this, I'm going to run it again and tell it to do something completely different to make sure that the background is much easier to process on the back end. If we think about what we have in our toolkit, what we've got are color removal options and we've got AI tool options. So let's see what AI does with that design. So here we are in Pixian. It immediately removed the background, but we lost a lot when we did that, right? So we're here, and this is what Pixion gave us. Let's make it a similar size. And as you can see, we lost a ton of detail when we removed the background. We lost all of the text. We lost lots of different fill colors in the unicorn, and it is just not usable anymore. So this design would be a monster to process. It would take way too much time. It's just not really that efficient. So if you're having trouble processing a background because it's complicated, most of the time the best play is to just let that image go and try to get to an image that is easier to process. So here we are in ChatGPT, and we're going to ask ChatGPT to make a prompt for the image that we had trouble making. We made it focus on making a background that's easy to remove. And then for some reason, it gave us a partially transparent image. So to sidestep that and to take a little bit more control of the image, we went ahead and put it on a white background. And this looks great on a white background. It's gonna be much easier to process. So let's download that and let's try putting that directly in Pixian to see how that goes. So let's copy it and let's look at it in Photoshop. And as you can see from when we put the green background behind it, we don't have any partial punch out issues. So this is much better. It's ready to be upscaled and used as a design. In fact, if you compare this to the original prompt, we ended up with a much better looking image. And it's a very similar take on the idea. I hope you found that helpful. And if you did, I would appreciate it if you gave me one of these for the algorithm. And I will see you in this video over here.